In this video, I'm going to be explaining what is called age-related macular degeneration. And if you're somebody who either has the diagnosis of macular degeneration, or maybe it runs in your family, or if you're just interested in learning about retinal disease from an eye doctor, then you're in the right place. And I think you're going to get a lot out of this because macular degeneration is a disease that is becoming more prevalent as the population of our world gets older. And as an eye doctor, I see this disease already several, if not, you know, I see them every week, if not every day. So it is concerning because macular degeneration does lead to permanent vision loss and even blindness. So in this video, we're going to be going over again what this disease is, really how it affects the eye, how it affects your vision, and then we'll go over the different types of macular degeneration because there's a couple different types, including the treatments and some extra pro tips on ways you could possibly reduce your chances of getting this disease and ways to reduce your chances of this getting worse if you already have it. So, hey guys, if you're here new to the channel, thank you for joining me. I am Dr. Joseph Allen. I completed my doctor, doctorate of optometry in 2015, graduating magna cum laude and salutatorian from the Rosenberg School of Optometry in San Antonio, Texas. After that, I completed my residency in ocular disease from the VA Medical Center here in Minneapolis uh, in Minnesota. Completing, then I went and completed my fellowship through the Academy of Optometry here uh, in just last year in 2018. So now I'm actually practicing full time at basically primary care in Buffalo, Minnesota. But I do this, I make, I, I'm, I run this YouTube channel, Dr. Eye Health, basically on my free time to help educate the world about the eyes, vision, and other vision products that could potentially help them see their best. So Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, certainly consider subscribing. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, as far as the kind of the ways to contact me, if you have further questions, if you're not able to catch the whole video, uh, feel, feel free to reach out to me here in the comments of the video. Also contact me on Instagram and Twitter. I also go by Dr. Eye Health on those programs if you're using any social media. So, if you're here in the chat, thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, we got Carla, we got uh, Fidelity. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, you know, where are you guys? What, where are you guys watching from? Go ahead and comment. Uh, either if you're live, go ahead and comment here. Uh, if you are just catching the replay, go ahead and comment in the description below. Let me know where you're watching from. And hey, do you have macular degeneration yourself, or does it run in your family? Let me know. Now, again, what I was saying about macular degeneration becoming more prevalent, that is one of the biggest concerns. And I actually have a nice graphic from the National Eye, basically the National Eye Institute had a, made, made a statistics basically coming up that in 2010, we had about 2.1 million people in the United States have macular degeneration or severe vision loss from it. And then by 2050, it will over double. It'll be 5.4 million people. So this is really concerning, especially because as we'll find out later, the treatments for this disease can be pretty tough. Um, so there are different types of macular degeneration and those can significantly affect vision a little bit differently. And we're gonna get into that. Uh, now, when it comes to macular degeneration, it is, cons it is called age-related macular degeneration. So typically when we think of this disease, we think of people who are a little bit older in their years, maybe in their 70s, 80s, 90s, if you have a grandparent who maybe has this condition. Uh, however, age-related macular degeneration actually even shows up in people at the age of 50. So we can start to see kind of these early aging changes inside of the eye. And even a couple of weeks ago, I had a person who's only like 54 and she was already st starting to develop the intermediate stages of this disease. And it's at the point where I couldn't get her seen better with glasses alone. So uh, if there, if you are at high risk for this, I think you definitely want to pay attention to what I'm going to, what I'm going to be telling you guys, what I'm going to be sharing. So what, what, what is macular degeneration really at its heart? So again, the name is called the macular degeneration and that references the macula, which is a certain part of the retina in the back of the eye. And actually, I'm going to show you this picture. This picture here is the picture of my own eye. And if you're, if you have any eye doctors watching, uh, this is a healthy eye. This is a healthy looking eye. This is the back of my left eye. And I chose my left eye because my right eye has got, uh, actually has something else, which we'll go into, into another video, but the back of my left eye looks pretty healthy. Now let's actually go to the next 
let's kind of identify what the structures are. So when the doctor looks in the eye, we actually see this yellow structure right there, the arrow pointing at it, and that is called the optic nerve. And that's what we study when we're concerned someone may have something called glaucoma. Now you see this dark spot in the middle, right in the middle there's this dark spot. And in that entire center, that inside that blue ring now is called the macula. All right, and so that really corresponds to the center part of your vision. Everything that you're looking around you, whatever you're focusing on straight ahead of you, like if you're looking at some letters uh, in a book and you see the letter A, if you look straight at that letter A, you're using that part of your retina, that macula. So that corresponds to your center vision. Now, in the very dead center of the macula is actually a little red X. I put a little red X on it. That's called the fovea. And that's even more like the really dead center of your vision. So that's kind of the crosshairs of everything that you look at. And so when we say macular degeneration, that means that part of the retina, the macula, is degenerating. It's actually slowly dying off. And, you know, we unfortunately don't know the exact cause of why this happens. But there are several trends there are several things that we've identified through many studies uh, and there's actually varying amounts, uh, different types of way this will, there's different ways this disease will present. But in general, the easiest way to describe what macular degeneration really is, is that the photoreceptors in the back of the eye, and that's a pic what we're looking at right here, this is an electron microscope picture of the photoreceptors in the back of the eye. These photoreceptors die they actually die typically very slowly, but there are some times where these, these actually get damaged rather quickly. So when that affects your eye, since this is the central part of your vision, people do lose their acuity. So when you're looking at the vision chart, you know, a normal vision chart here on the side looks great and normal, but somebody with more intermediate to advanced macular generation, it may look like on the other side, it may look really blurry, Maybe they have a central part of their vision missing. And this can be really significant if you think about hey, like your quality of life. If you're looking at your family, if you're seeing your family and you can't see their faces, you know, and if you try to look off to the side, everything's out of focus. It's not clear. And so from an eye care professional standpoint, this is honestly one of the diseases I fear developing it myself. Not that I have it in my family or that I'm a high risk for it, but because I see so many patients struggle with it. And it's tough. Um, you know, part of being a professional in school, they kind of train you that you kind of have to be kind of calloused a little bit because you have to make logical decisions. But at the same time, you're working with real people and their lives are significantly affected by their vision, right? They think them, you know, if you ask somebody with, you know, like, hey, would you rather would you rather die or would you rather lose your hearing or rather lose your vision? A lot of people would say they would rather die than go blind. And so even though this is a very significant source of vision loss, uh, in fact, I think it's 46 percent of all the significant severe central vision loss in the United States accounts for is for macular degeneration. So it is it is significant. But, you know, thankfully, we're getting better at detecting it, getting it detecting it earlier. The, we're working on new treatments and uh, people who do have vision loss, there are resources for people with low vision and severe vision loss. So when we actually get into what is macular degeneration and what does it look like? So during an examination, we look inside the eye, we dilate the eye, we look at the retina in the back of the eye. And one of the kind of the earliest, well, I should back up, one of the earliest symptoms if you are somebody who starts developing macular degeneration, one of the earliest symptoms that people typically see is the loss of their night vision. And this is something that is kind of tough because there's other diseases as we get older that we also develop like cataracts that can also affect your night vision. But macular degeneration, the first symptom is typically loss of night vision. And it doesn't necessarily correlate with what the back of the eye looks like because oftentimes people will start having those symptoms years before we actually, the doctor's able to see a cause for it in the back of the eye. Uh, and there's actually some new ways to diagnose macular degeneration just by checking how your night vision can adapt. Uh, and that's called ADAPT-DX or ADAPT-Diagnosis. Adapt uh, and so not every 
clinic will have that instrument, but some do. Uh, and the really when the doctor looks in the eye, this is so during an exam, like the other day, just yesterday, I had two people who have macular generation and I looked inside the eye and I could see this yellow kind of buildup of this protein in the back of the eye that's normally not there. Okay, and so this protein in the back of the eye, I'll show you what it looks like. This is a picture of somebody with large drusen. That's this yellow protein in the back of the eye that normally is not supposed to be there. This yellow protein, the easiest way to describe what drusen is, this yellow protein in the back, is basically cellular garbage in the back of the eye. That's the easiest way to describe it. Just like all the cells in your body, they have kind of a limited lifespan. Eventually, they use all of their kind of their purpose, their energy, and they actually get spent. And then your body basically eats up that cellular garbage of whatever that cell was left. Uh, it destroys itself. It goes through apoptosis. Uh, the cells get phagocytized or eaten up. And the cellular garbage gets processed and recycled throughout your body. That's all. That's what happens with all of your organs, with your, you know, a lot of your deeper levels of your skin. Uh, the issue is that within the retina, your retinal cells, your photoreceptor cells, there's one of the most highly metabolic tissues in the entire body. And so when light hits them, the light energy has to go through this whole process of basically shedding the cells of the photoreceptors, and then your body has to eat up what's left of that those garbage cells. And this drusen, this yellow protein, is basically the buildup of that garbage that's not being recycled. It's not being cleaned up from the back of the eye. And one of the reasons believed before this is because there's the back layer of the retina that's the support layer called the retinal pigment epithelium. And again, it's still kind of a mystery, but it stops really functioning. And it's interesting enough because we have some really great technology in the eye clinic. Most clinics I feel may have this. We have this at our clinic called an optical coherent tomographer uh, or an OCT. And this is kind of like getting an ultrasound of the back of the eye. In fact, if you've ever had this done before or you've seen this done on maybe a family member, uh, go ahead and let me know. But this is a fantastic technology. It's kind of like getting a, like an ultrasound of the back of the eye. It gives really high definition image. And so this next picture I'm going to show you is what a normal OCT looks like. This is uh, on the right side, on the one side here, it's a normal. On the other side, we see drusen. And right now I have it in black and white because that's how I look at it in the clinic. Uh, right in the center there, there's kind of this mountain. Those are the retinal tissue. The retinal tissue is in normal. That's what it looks like with that little divot there. But underneath that divot on the drusen side, there's kind of this buildup. And that's actually that protein, that drusen, uh, building up behind the retina. And that's, that's concerning because that shows that the retina is not functioning properly. It's not cleaning out that garbage. And that actually corresponds to some weaker spots of the retina. Now, beyond the drusen, we often start seeing pigment changes in the back of the eye. And those pigment changes have to do with that back layer of the retina that start to change. And they stop functioning to really support the retinal tissue. And eventually the retinal cells, they can't get the right, really the right um, nutrients that it needs to survive. And then these cells start to die and they start to atrophy. And so we actually call that geographic atrophy. And so this is somebody who no longer just has the yellow spots. You can see some of the drusen here, but in the dead center of their eye, in the center of the macula, that's actually where the retinal cells have died off. And you can actually see beyond the retina and you can start seeing the blood vessels in the choroid, which is a blood vessel structure that's behind the eye. Uh, as far as kind of having this atrophy in the back of the eye, the, the concern is that you know, once you start having that, the cells are gone, they're dead, and we really don't have a way to get them back. And so the vision starts to become very significant. Typically, the atrophy starts kind of above or below the actual central fovea, the dead center of your vision, but eventually it becomes almost like a donut and then just completely obliterates the center of your vision. Um, what's nice is that, again, we can use that same instrument, the OCT, the optical coherence tomographer, which is uses infrared light 
to, again, scan the back of the eye, and it's very similar to getting an ultrasound, but instead of using sound, it uses light. And we can do that because the eye has clear media to actually look into. So before we had a picture of the OCT with Drusen, this is an OCT comparing normal and you can see some drusen, you can see the mounds there, but then I have this little arrow pointing to where the retina itself is not as thick. And that's actually where the, the deeper layers of the retina have atrophied. And so, yeah, that's geographic atrophy, and that's associated with more severe forms of macular degeneration and corresponds with more se severe levels of vision loss. Uh, now, what's cool is that OCT can be used for many different reasons for macular degeneration and many other diseases. So a lot of specialty clinics, whether you're seeing a retina, retina doctor, uh, whether you're seeing just a primary care vision doctor like myself, we, we use this tool all the time because in our, in our clinic, we do see a lot of disease. Now, there's different types of macular degeneration. If you've ever been told, ever gone to the doctor yourself or heard about it from a family member, there's two different types. There's dry macular degeneration and then there's wet macular degeneration. Now, dry macular degeneration, we basically described already. That was the drusen, the pig, the, the, basically the yellow kind of pigmented spots in the back of the eye, and then the atrophy, the geographic atrophy where that happens. That's all dry macular degeneration. Wet macular degeneration is the more severe form of macular degeneration and happens faster. Dry macular degeneration generally goes slowly progresses and usually isn't associated with as much vision loss, where wet macular degeneration comes on very quickly, happens at any time. So if even if you have just a mild case of macular degeneration that's dry, people can still convert to the wet form at any time, and it can happen just overnight within a matter of just minutes. So wet macular degeneration is where the basic, so behind the retina, there's actually a structure called Brooks membrane, and that's made of collagen. Behind that layer is a group of blood vessels called the choroid. And those choroid blood vessels, they help support the retina, they help support the eye, keep it healthy. But when you have macular degeneration and these tissues, this drusen and this atrophy starts to form, that Brooks membrane of collagen starts to become brittle and weak. And these new, these blood vessels in the choroid actually start growing into the retina itself. Uh, kind of like if you can imagine roots from a tree growing into the foundation of a house or a building. If you can imagine those roots breaking into the foundation, it's going to destroy the foundation. It's going to cause structural instability in that building and it, it could actually cause a lot of severe damage. And that's kind of what happens with the retina and wet macular degeneration. This is actually a picture of what macular degeneration looks like. I'm going to show it to you uh, right here. So it actually is bleeding in the back of the eye. So these blood vessels leak into the eye. They get fragile and they break. And so we'll actually see bleeding either within the retina or even behind the retina. Sometimes it doesn't look red. Sometimes it looks kind of a gray green appearance. But in, it is usually a leakage of blood and other fluid into the retina itself. So that when we see that as an eye care professional, I kind of, you know, it's not good news because that means that one, they're having trouble with their vision. Two, the treatment option is goes to another step, a whole other level, and they're going to have a bit more struggles going forward. So to kind of understand it more, just to give you guys more of a visualization, again, I took a, there's another OCT I'm going to share with you guys, again, comparing normal versus uh, not just, I, I think I accidentally have Drusen in there, but it's supposed to be wet macular, this is wet macular generation on the other side. And you actually see this large mound, and those are actually basically the leaking fluid, what we call a net, uh, into the back of the retina. And so that that's that's what wet macular generation looks like. and as soon as we see that, from my perspective, I'm not a retinal specialist, I immediately refer that out. Uh, the sooner it can be treated, the better the visual outcome. Uh, now, in terms of kind of treatments for that, uh, we usually also order another test called a fluorescein angiography. And again, let me know if you've ever seen this or maybe another family member's had this done before. 
but it's actually where we do an injection of a medication called fluorescein sodium. We actually inject that into the vein and it travels through the eye and we take pictures of the eye while this dye goes through the eye and it actually lights up and we actually see more of what the blood vessels are doing in the back of the eye. And this is just kind of an example. This person doesn't have macular degeneration, but you can see all the blood vessels being lighting up, kind of like almost like lightning bolts. But if somebody has wet macular degeneration, that fluorescein sodium will highlight and show us exactly where it's leaking from. And it'll show us more of where we need to target the treatment. So that's usually one of the one of the tests that we do. Now, again, like I said, macular degeneration, the dry form can convert to the more severe wet form at any time. And so if you ever are diagnosed with macular degeneration, it's likely your doctor is going to hand you a vision screener that you can use at home that's more sensitive than just, you know, calling them when you see a change. This vision screener is called an Amsler grid. And you may have already seen something like this, maybe on a pamphlet or something like that before. Uh, now, an Amsler grid is basically a 20 by 20 uh, one degree square uh, at about 20 centimeters uh, from about 16, 14 to 20 centimeters. It, it creates about a 20 degree angle of your central vision. And so it's something that you stare at the center dot. And if those lines ever start to see bent, wavy, distorted, that means your vision has changed and that your doctor needs to see you right away. Uh, this is an example of a normal. So, if, you know, if you don't have any problems, this the one Amsler grid should be perfectly normal. This is an idea of kind of what somebody with macular degeneration may see. They may see kind of the lines bent, distorted, and then maybe even a spot missing. So that's something that if, if you've maybe been diagnosed with macular degeneration and your doctor didn't give that to you or you don't remember getting one, uh, or maybe you had one but you lost it, you threw it away, uh, certainly there's ways to get them. Uh, there's free versions you can download online. You can even uh, talk to your doctor. I guarantee you they're going to have something to give you and they're happy to give them out. Uh, and something you can put on the fridge, you can put something on a workbench, something you could just quick glance at every week just to kind of check each eye and be like, I'm good and you're fine. But if you do notice that change, again, the sooner you talk to your doctor and make sure that, you know, hey, what's going on? If it is something like wet, wet macular degeneration, the sooner it gets caught, the sooner it gets treated, usually has better outcomes. Um, so, uh, I know we've kind of gone through a lot of information so far. Thank you guys so much for being in the chat. Uh, again, want to say hi to, to Bob. Uh, we got Eileen in the chat too. Um, a couple other people and thank you guys so much. Uh, I love life is here. Uh, I know I love life is great. She, um, she's actually works, uh, in eye care as well. She does OCTs all the time. Uh, and so it's really exciting to have other people in the eye care community joining in these, um, joining in these conversations. Thank you guys so much for being here. Now to kind of go on to the next step, we're going to talk about treatments. If you're, if you're liking this video so far, whether you're here live or if you are catching on the replay, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. It means a lot to see that. Uh, I, I like, you know, I really, I figure if this, if this sort of content helps even just one person, it's totally worth it for me to spend some time educating, educating everybody I can. Um, you know, but it, it helps a lot if you guys hit that like button. So thank you so much. Now we're going to talk about treatments because that's that's usually what everybody wants to know. Like, hey, how is this disease treated? Uh, there's a couple different types of treatments, and we're going to discuss those. Okay. Now, when it comes to dry macular degeneration, there's different treatments for that, and a largely it revolves around vitamins and lifestyle changes. Uh, now, there's different types of vitamins that are out there for the eyes. Eye vitamins. You've probably seen them at the store, and we'll go over those a little bit more in detail in just a moment. Lifestyle changes, there's some more things there too. Uh, and those are something, again, I'll kind of rush about in just a, just a few seconds here. But the wet form actually in, involves injections. It involves injections of medications inside the eye, uh, which sounds scary. Uh, anytime a needle's coming toward the eye, I think that's like in horror movies and stuff, right? Um, but it's, it's a reality. The medication that we use is called an anti-VEGF, and there's multiple different brands of these anti-VEGFs, the one that's going to be best for you is something that's determined by your retina doctor, whoever's doing the injection. Uh, it varies a little bit on cost, insurance, uh, and effectiveness, but there's always new trials developing. But the injections, uh, they numb your eyes, you don't feel anything. You look away from it so you don't see it coming toward you. 
Um, but the injections are significant for improving and helping the status of the eye with wet macular generation. So unfortunately, some people who get wet, ma wet macular generation, they don't like getting the injections or they don't feel like it helps. And so they stop going. And if they stop going to see their specialists and stop getting these treatments, it only gets worse. It's not going to get any better. Uh, so I, I strongly encourage if, if you have somebody who in your family maybe has had wet macular generation, they had injections and they just stopped going because they didn't like it, you know, maybe have them watch this video or strongly encourage them to go back. Um, in general, inje injections uh, often are done every six weeks until things have improved or have stabilized. But uh, yeah, it's, it's an injection basically every six weeks. You go into a retinal clinic and oftentimes you'll see 60 to 100 people sitting, waiting in line to get these injections because it's, it's, it, it's, it helps so much. It has kind of revolutionized a lot of treatment in eye care when uh, the retina has problems. This injection basically makes the blood vessels that have leaked into the eye kind of recede and helps the blood kind of uh, basically resorb into the eye. So that, that's the reason that we use these medications. In fact, some of these medications started off as cancer treatments. Uh, and they were just like, wow, this is helping people so much. Wonder what happens if we use this in the eye. And we just saw this just you know, amazing kind of changes within the health of the retina. So uh, yes, that, that's why they're so recommended. Uh, another older treatment that they've not really done anymore is using lasers and another one called photodynamic therapy. Um, they don't. They really don't use that too much, um, but that's a, that that was an older sort of treatment. And I suppose somewhere there might be somebody doing that. But in largely, they're they're basically just using shots of anti VEGF. Some of the names that you may hear about uh, ones are called the Alia, Avastin. Uh, there's a couple of different ones. Um, I know Anne was kind of mentioning them there, so I just want to give a shout out to those names. Uh, again, with 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 dry and wet macular generation. The concern is that it often does progress. Um, you know, I don't. My intent isn't to scare people that they could be going blind or that they'll end up being blind, but it, it's concerning. And so I want to encourage you, if you're having vision loss, if this runs in your family, if you're worried about it, make sure you talk with your doctor about it. And if there's anything that they recommend for you and your eye health, um, you know, a, as you get older, you know, it, 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 you know, people think, hey, I'm going to retire, I'm going to have this great life, I'm going to be able to do all these things that I've been saving up for. When the reality is, you know, if you get a disease like this, it's going to set in, it's going to severely limit your activity, um, or at least has the potential to. So a couple of big risk factors I want to go over uh, for anybody who maybe, maybe macular generation runs in your family. Uh, and I want to kind of, these are all kind of risk factors that have been studied time and time again. Uh, there's even a couple that I'll kind of shed some light on based on the studies in conflicting studies. So these are the risk factors. If you're over the age of 50, you are developing higher risk of developing macular degeneration. If you're under the age of 50, uh, if we see signs that are similar to macular degeneration, we start to think that it's actually a different disease. Uh, genetics. So it does run in families. In fact, there are genetic studies that have specifically targeted certain uh, types of genes that are associated with not just macular degeneration in general, but more severe forms of it. There's one, one famous one called complement factor H, and that there are genetic tests to figure those out. In large, uh, doctors don't order these genetic tests for this disease because a lot of those genetic tests are rather expensive and there's not much utility to them. There are some arguments because some newer studies came out finding that, hey, if you do, do a genetic test for macular degeneration, they could recommend different types of vitamins that may be more beneficial than just the generic eye vitamins. Uh, however, there is kind of a lot of speculation in the current literature about that because the company that makes that genetic test also did the publication and also owns the company that's making like the vitamins too. So there's there's some speculation and a lot of kind of arguments between that. But as time goes on, hopefully there'll there'll be more information. If we go back uh, to my risk factors here, we have smoking. And I highlighted that because it is so significant for developing macular degeneration. Many studies have, uh, over many studies, they've basically all found that smoking is the number one modifiable risk factor that you can do by to reduce your chances of getting this disease and to reduce the chances of the disease getting worse. And it's actually found that it's, uh, 
if you are someone who smokes two packs a day, you're at a higher risk than someone who just smokes two cigarettes a day. So it's kind of, it's dose dependent. So even if you can reduce the amount that you smoke, that's gonna significantly improve your chances of not developing this condition. Um, so that's why your eye doctor, every time you come in to see me, I'm talking, if you smoke, I'm saying like, hey, this is not good for your body. You know it's not good. It says warning on the label, but you know we have to do whatever we can to encourage you to whether it be counseling, medications, something to help you quit. Uh, in addition, there's a couple others. Uh, low dietary antioxidants. People who don't eat as many fruits and veggies with uh, the high amount of antioxidants, they are more prone to developing this condition. Uh, people with higher amounts of cholesterol, uh, people who are higher BMI, so you're not exercising as much, you're not eating very healthy foods, those individuals are more likely to develop these signs. And I have some question marks next to low dietary omega-3 and sunlight exposure. And that's because they have found studies that people who eat more dietary sources of omega-3, we're talking like oily fish, uh, certain types of nuts and seeds like walnuts will have omega-3 in them. Uh, I don't know much about algae because those haven't been studied in these large scale studies, but uh, these are all sources of omega-3 fatty acids. But they found that dietary sources of omega-3s actually people have higher amounts have reduced chance of developing this condition. But they've also done studies with supplements and the supplement studies have found that it didn't really make a difference for the development of this disease. The, ch the real kind of, again, there's always conflicting evidence between one study and another and different doctors arguing back and forth. Uh, some people would say, hey, the type of omega-3 supplement you gave them in this study wasn't regulated, it wasn't high quality, it wasn't enough in to, of a supplement. Uh, so there's a lot of arguments there, um, but it's still recommended that you at least eat a diet with more omega-3 fatty acids in them uh, if you can. Uh, as far as sunlight exposure, that's also got a question mark because there are, there are epidemiological studies that show, yes, people who have exposure to sunlight, such as like the, um, the Beaver Dam Eye study, they found that people who have spent more time out in the sun throughout their life without wearing sunglasses or a wide-brim hat were more likely to develop macular degeneration. But there's also many other studies that found that it wasn't uh, associated with sunlight exposure. Either way, many eye doctors still recommend, hey, wear sunglasses, wear a wide brim hat because you're going to protect the eyes and the skin around the eyes from sun damage. You're going to slow down perhaps the development of cataracts to some degree, and it's not going to hurt the retina protecting it from UV light. So there's, there's a lot of kind of thoughts about that, but uh, certainly having sunglasses is a good health tip for the eyes overall. Now back to the dry macular generation and the, the, Possibly your doctor, if you're, again you have the disease, or maybe you've already been at the store and you've seen something called eye vitamins. One of the more famous, uh, one of the more famous things I want to talk to you about is so this is an example of one eye vitamin called Preservision. That's a branded by Bosch and Loam, uh, and you'll see that big word, the letters here on the side that says A Reds Two Formula. So A Reds is a study, uh, the first A Reds study. Uh, there's two of them. There's AREDS-1, AREDS-2. That stands for the Age-Related Eye Disease Study. These are some of the biggest studies that basically concluded, it was actually, I believe, funded by the National Eye Institute. Uh, there was almost 5,000 people with different levels of macular degeneration, and they studied them over a prolonged period of time, and they found that basically people who had the intermediate stage of macular degeneration or worse, benefited from taking these vision supplements. And it slowed down the rate of progressing to the more severe form and having more severe vision loss by almost 25% over the course of five years. So that is why whenever a patient has at least the intermediate stage of macular generation, most doctors will start prescribing eye vitamins. Now, if you have really severe or wet AMD in both eyes, uh, some doctors won't prescribe eye vitamins because these studies also found that there wasn't much of a benefit to taking it at that time. Uh, also, if you have early macular degeneration, they didn't find it was statistically significant to take macular degeneration these pills or these vitamins to slow to prevent it. Now, this was this. These are the major studies. In AREDS one study, they actually used vitamin A, the kind of like carrots. Carrots are good for the eyes, right? 
Well, supplementation of vitamin A was later found after that study to increase the risk of lung cancer in previous smokers. So they actually took out vitamin A in the latest study in, a reg, in the AREG2 study, and they supplemented two antioxidants or carotenoids called lutein and another one called zeaxanthine or zeaxanthin. Uh, so those are really important. So this is the supplemental facts uh, of AREG2. And this is the kind of the standard. Uh, they have vitamin C at a really high level dose. They have vitamin E at a really high level dose because they're strong antioxidants. Zinc is a mineral that also has real good benefits for the back of the eye. Uh, and then they have copper. And copper was put into it because when you take supplements of zinc, when you take supplements of zinc, it basically reduces your body's absorption of copper. And so people actually have copper deficiency if they're not taking some sort of supplement of copper in it. Uh, so that's why that's there. It's not necessarily because the copper is good for the eye, but it's there because the zinc prevents the absorption of the copper. Uh, lutein and zeaxanthine, again, uh, those are very powerful antiox uh, antioxidant carotenoids that are actually located in the macula of the eye. They're most highly concentrated in that central part of the macula. And so a lot of a lot of different eye vitamins. Even eye doctors will recommend taking supplements of lutein and zeaxanthin if you don't have macular degeneration, because there are a lot of studies that associated that with uh, having increased perception at nighttime, um, like sharper acuity, less problems with glare. I've read that one. Um, there's there's a lot of different kind of support for doing that, and you get lutein from a couple different food sources, mainly from green leafy vegetables like spinach, kale. Uh, you can get it from eggs, uh, a lot of different kind of like flowers and things like that. Zeaxanthin is much harder, is much harder to get in your diet. In fact, you you get it from orange peppers uh, and kind of food like that, but uh, it's not commonly found in nature. So uh, they actually supplement it back into the diet with these with these uh, these eye vitamins. Now, there's many different brands of eye vitamins. If you go to the store, you'd be overwhelmed by how many brands there are. And if you don't already know supplements, there's there's kind of this bad rap in eye care, not just eye care, but the medical community in general, because a lot of studies with eye vitamins aren't supportive. In fact, AREDs, those are one of the only studies that actually have proven benefit for the eyes. Uh, and not just the eyes, but the whole body. So it's it's one of the best supporters for the, taking supplements. Now, again, there's different brands of them. Uh, different doctors will recommend different brands. In fact, even though I show you Preservision here, it's actually not my favorite. And one of the reasons why is because the level of zinc in the vitamin formulation. The level of zinc in this original, in the AREDS original formulation was 80 milligrams of zinc. 80 milligrams of zinc in a day is a lot of zinc. In fact, it's associated with things like urinary tract infections, amongst other things. Uh, so they later, in AREDS 2, actually did the study again, but they reduced the amount of zinc, and they reduced it to about 25 milligrams of zinc. And they found that it was just as effective with less concentration dose. Uh, an interesting another fact is also that a lot of people in, this, in the studies, AREDS 1 and 2, also took Centrum Silver or some other sort of multivitamin along with it. So they're almost like double dosing in a way, um, which is normally accepted. If you could also, if you take a multivitamin, multivitamins are not the same as I vitamins, but it's often recommended to take both. Uh, again, this is when you're at a state of stage of intermediate macular degeneration or worse. So usually eye doctors like myself don't start prescribing macular gener or eye vitamins like Preservision or others until you hit that intermediate stage because these large-scale studies found there wasn't much benefit at the early stage. However, a lot of other newer studies uh, have found that there are some maybe protective benefits and visual enhancements that you can get from taking these vitamins. So a lot of doctors may still recommend, hey, taking this as a precaution or just for overall eye health. Um, even some of the even even some retinal specialists I know still they they recommend these. Uh, this is a brand that I personally take and like because I've done a lot of tried I tried to research and find you know what is the best brand out there. You know there's a lot of different brands and there's really no regulation by the Food and Drug Administration in the United States on what's put into these supplements or really the benefits of these supplements how they're made. So I, I specifically go to, whenever I go to giant meetings for eye care, I always sit on the panel discussions 
of vitamins, of eye nutrition, ocular nutrition, because it's something that interests me. And uh, I've asked basically every panel member, and this is the one that everybody seems to vouch for. And I did my own research. They do This company does a lot of their own research, and that was from the I Promise brand. Now, there's a lot of people who may argue the effectiveness of these or really how good they are. Um, and that goes with any supplement. Every brand that's out there that makes supplements will argue that theirs is more pure, theirs is better, uh, theirs is made higher quality. Uh, really, for me, I fall back on, hey, what does the study say? Where is the evidence? Um, you know, what, you know, who did that study? Was the study done by that brand? Was the study done by an independent uh, research or university? So those are big things that we look at, but this is the one brand that I've found is the most credible, and that's through the I Promise brand. If you want more information about that, I will include a link in the description below. Uh, I Promise is, um, I've worked with them for a little while, and I, I just find they're overall very good. Uh, so that, that's the big thing with dry macular degeneration. Once you hit that intermediate stage, really the only treatment we have is to reduce those risk factors, like smoking, quitting smoking, uh, trying to exercise, watch cholesterol, and then also to take eye vitamins when appropriate. Beyond just that, it's waiting. As an eye doctor, we watch, and it's important to keep track of how the vision's going and how the retina looks. And so as soon as we see signs of something like wet macular degeneration, then we have to start treating with injections in the back of the eye. So it's really important that if you have this disease that you are seeing your eye doctor. Now, I don't know these doctors here in this picture. I just was able to pull them online, but uh, I wanted to represent, you know, there's lady doctors, there's men doctors out there, uh, and I want you to make sure that you're seeing your eye doctors, okay? Uh, don't ignore them. When they say they want to see you back in six months, there's a reason they want to see you in six months versus just one year uh, or sooner because they, the, based on the risk factors of diseases like macular degeneration, the guidelines, we, we will want to see you back sooner if you're at a higher risk of converting to the wet macular degeneration. So thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, again, wanted to give a shout out to a couple of different people. I see Lulu Love in the chat. Uh, we got Din Dog. Thank you so much. Um, thank you again, Fidelity, for being here the whole time. I've got Dr. Eyeball MD. I love having uh, different eye doctors here in here in the chat. I think it's really awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me here this evening. Again, if you have other sort of questions about the eyes, vision, and specifically about macular degeneration, that's going to be our eye health question of the day. Do you have macular degeneration? Does it run in your family? What other questions do you have about macular degeneration that we didn't go over? I'd love to hear your questions. I'll try my best to answer them. Feel free to comment in this section below. Uh, you know, otherwise, I'm going to let you guys go tonight. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see other cool videos from Dr. Eye Health, including new videos, as well as some other videos that I've produced about retinal health or just eye health in general, feel free to click or tap the screen up here to the side or go ahead and click or tap the screen over here. Thank you so much for joining me. You have a great day. and We'll see you in the next video.